My name is Leslie Penny. I am a candidate for the Liberal Party of Canada. I am a born and raised Albertan with a brief stint in Ontario for one year after I graduated from university. I was an RN with a degree and I have done a number of different jobs. I tell people that when we moved to Barhead, I started one role as a nurse. I then changed jobs, I think, eight times as we changed and shuffled around in Alberta Health Services. But I never had to sell the house, although I did end up putting a lot of miles on a vehicle. Why am I running to be the MP from the Peace River Westlock riding into the federal government? I believe in what the Liberal Party stands for. I ran to begin with because I thought it is very important for people to have a choice. But the more I have been listening to people and some of the frustrations that people have, I also think that one of our problems in this problem province is that we're unbalanced. We've got liberal MPs, two in Edmonton and two in Calgary, but there isn't a liberal rural MP and hasn't been for us as long as I can remember. And I think we have to think about what happens when we have a liberal government without a rural Alberta voice. I think it would make a big difference. So that's one really, really good reason why you should vote for me. Because I want to represent this riding at the Liberal Caucus. Some of the things that the Liberal Party has done in the past four years that I think are worth mentioning, we instituted a child tax credit, which means that money comes back to families with children. It has lifted 300,000 children out of poverty. And one of the things that I believe very strongly about, because I was, in, as part of that nursing career, a public health nurse, it's so very, very important that we make sure that our children get the best possible start. I was reading an article, and this was about the states, but it also applies here. We can pay $100,000 to keep somebody in prison for a year, or we can spend a third of that on an early childhood intervention program that will help ready kids for school so that they can succeed. There isn't a level playing field when children start school. And we do have some programs to help get them started. And I know that's a provincial situation, but it also helps when the family has extra funds to buy some of the things that help to enrich a child's life. So that's one of the things I'm very proud of that the Liberal government did in their past four years. Another thing that happened that will help a lot of us is the fact that our income tax as a middle class was reduced. And again, when you give people more money in their pockets, and particularly that demographic, you put money into a local economy. It doesn't give you enough money to fly to, to Cuba, but it will maybe help you get, go downtown and, and buy a new pair of shoes or a new dress. And that helps our communities that dollar goes around and around, and each time it's spent, the person who receives it will pay a certain amount of tax on that, and that is the basis for the programs that we supply as a federal government. One of the things that we will talk about tonight, I am just about positive, is what about the fact that we have a federal debt? And one of the things that contributes to the debt is when you spend more money than you bring in. This is a cyclical thing. Our economy is recovering from the, from the recession that impacted so many people. But it's not as healthy as it can be yet. And one of the ways that you can influence economy and help people back to work is to provide funding for things like the infrastructure that, first of all, keeps our economy moving. It helps our safety. It's interesting that we all, in every community I've ever been in, there's always something that needs fixing. So 
Infrastructure money is part of that. Now some of that comes from the provinces, some of it comes from the federal government. We've talked about housing. Again, a lot of that lies in the realm of the municipalities and the, and the province. But there are ways that the federal government can help to encourage housing that people can afford. One of the things that I've been frustrated with, I'm also a town councillor in my spare time, and we will have a group of people come and they want to build housing. But they want to build it, and this is fine, they want to build it for the 55 pluses. Because the 55 pluses, for the most part, are easier to get along with and often pay their rent and take care of places. Families, they have a hard time finding a rental property if you have a, a dog or kids, or both, heaven forbid, it's harder to find housing. Now one of the great things, and we'll talk a little bit about how our donations to organizations can help. One of the other ways besides the government building, have any of you been part of a Habitat for Humanity project? I think this is one of the <coughs> greatest things. We had a project in Barhead and we decided after we'd done the Habitat project and built a swimming pool that we needed to take a break from asking people for much more. But again soon, I am hoping that we will be able to not have just a duplex, but a fourplex. Because each time you do something, that helps to get more money into that program. And the thing that's wonderful about that is it does help people who are low income. They're, they may be a bit high, but it helps people have the pride of ownership. I'm also on the social housing committee from through the town. And keeping social housing in good shape has always been a challenge. So there's that aspect of it. The rural development, Western economic development, isn't a program that the Liberals invented, but is a program that we support that helps start new businesses. In our small communities, it's small business that provides jobs. Our small business tax is the lowest in the G7. And that helps keep the business is going. When we talk about debt, if you have a business and you want to expand it, sometimes you have to borrow money, you build and add on, hire new people, and there's progress that way. The government works a bit differently. It has what we call a gross domestic product. All of the stuff that we supply and provide. What you do is you compare the debt to that GDP. Right now it's at 30.9%. And that's coming down over the four years that the Liberals have been in power. And it was coming down when Stephen Harper was in power as well. It's interesting when you look at the history of that, we've had up to 50, higher 50%. And that didn't matter whether it was a Conservative government or a, a Liberal government. It depends on how the economy is going. So I don't lie awake at night worrying about debt. I'm more concerned about the fact that we invest in our people, in our structures, in our communities. And investment pays off. It pays off with jobs. It pays off with people who can afford things. It pays off to have healthier people. I probably will, I'm hoping somebody will ask a question about pharmacare because that's another thing I'm quite passionate about. There are many, many things that a government needs to do, and to do that, it needs money to do it. I don't question the fact that there are things that happen that we need to be questioning all the time. And I would certainly encourage you to communicate with either your MP or with the Minister of Finance when you've got a, a, something that's really bugging you, and they should get back to you. And if I'm your MP, if you have a problem, I would get back to you. So I'm hoping that when you go either to the advanced poll that starts tomorrow or to the poll on the 21st, that you will vote liberal. And thank you very much for coming and thanks to the Chamber of Commerce for putting this on.